It's 2023 and you want to get your own system measurement and tuning rig. You've been learning a lot and want to have some tools of your own, but you don't want to overpay. You don't want to buy stuff twice. You don't want to underpay and have stuff break. What should you get? So today I'm going to walk you through the field tested gear that I use on every show and walk you through a stair step approach to how you can get something. If you're just on a budget, maybe you're a regular freelancer, maybe you work at a production company, need something rack mounted, what gear and what series would I recommend? We're going to be looking at audio interfaces, the measurement microphones and the software that you need and a couple of other bonus accessories that might be helpful to you. We've gone through in that order and at the end, I'll list the, the packages, if you will, if you are that beginner, that mid-level freelancer or working at a production company, how much that costs, how you can maybe exchange a few items in them. I think this will be really helpful to you. Let's jump right in. First up, we've got audio interfaces. Which one should you get depending on the amount of IO that you need, cost, performance, flexibility, all that. If I had to choose just one series, it would be the Evo series from Audient. It's fairly new. They started, I think, with the Evo 4, then the 8, and now the 16. So it's the same platform, same software, just differing amounts of IO. So the Evo 4 is just two in, two out. So you can only have a maximum of two measurement microphones on this. And you might be saying, well, what about the loop back? Don't I need that in my transfer function measurements to have a loop out? You can do it that way and that's awesome. But what's incredible about this platform, if we go here to Evo 8 and scroll down, I have built into the software, the Evo 8 has four microphone inputs right here. And then this second actually has two loopback inputs. So what that means is I can select it as an output in any software. And it's actually gonna loop it back in as an input. So if I'm in smart, my signal generator does not have to pass out an output then come into a mic pre. It's just gonna digitally loop it through then serve as my reference signal, which I can compare to my measurement. So that's really handy to be able to have that. And now in the field with my Evo 8, the one that I use, I can free up and have four microphones coming in and use the digital loop back. The only thing that's gonna change in your measurement is you'll incur less than a millisecond of latency all around in the measurement. So not a big deal when you're trying to look at proper navigation, throw distances or anything like that. And the phase response is gonna change a little bit in the top end since you're not comparing the A to D to the other A to D. Not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. It's a willing trade I make all the time uh, so that I can have four microphones coming into my interface. So the Evo 4, again, just two inputs. The Evo 8 is gonna have four mic inputs. And then the Evo 16 is if you need something rack mounted and you need eight microphone inputs. So the pricing on these, at least last time I checked on Sweetwater, is 129 for the Evo 4, 199 for the Evo 8, and 499 for the Evo 16. So really affordable. So if you wanna take a look at a unit, I've got my Evo 8 right here. Nice and compact, really well built. It's plastic, but it's sturdy. I, I like that. I love the simplicity of the interface. I love that the IO is on the back so I can have cables coming up to the, to the unit and coming off the back and not coming in front of me. I can use headphones if I need them, or I've actually used this on site to record voiceovers for a, cor a couple of corporate gigs where they needed those recorded and how to crank up the preamps pretty high. They sound great. Uh, it's been a fantastic unit. It is also bus powered for the Evo 4 and the Evo 8. So it's just a single USB-C cable that goes to your computer and it's powered that way. I will say if your computer does not have USB-C, you have to use a USB-C to type A cable and you can only run phantom power on two inputs at that time. So I would be careful there that if you have a computer that does not have USB-C, you can only send phantom power to two microphones at a time. There are other products out there. At the end of the day, anything that can cleanly get audio in and audio out is going to work. But for our specialized work of system measurement, having something compact, that's clean, easy to use, the added feature of the digital loopback is nice, uh, and it's really affordable. Again, four mic pre's for under $200 is crazy. So definitely check out the Evo interfaces from Audient. Next up, we got measurement microphones. Let's start mid-tier, and then we'll go with another budget option. This is the iSimCon EMX 7150. I've got here, I own four of them total. It's a killer microphone, 
very even sensitivity from microphone to microphone. So I'm not having to balance the gains across uh, my four microphones much at all. The frequency response is very, very similar. It's really well built, it's solid. Uh, it's worth it in my opinion. So here from Rational Acoustics is where I bought mine. Uh, the makers are smart and I got them at their deal. They're sold out right now, but they'll get another shipment in uh, in the near future and you can buy it from there. IsomCon sells worldwide. So if you're not in the US, order it from IsomCon or wherever they have distributors in your country. Uh, but, but Rational Acoustics is where I buy my stuff. So if you're saying, hey, this this uh, 300 bucks uh, or a little more is, 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 I can't quite step into that, but I need a microphone. Phone. The next option I'll pick is the Rational RTA 420. So this is 99 bucks. And why it's called the RTA is that it's not going to have uh, the SPL handling capability to, to measure at really high concert levels, maybe 130 or 140 dB C weighted. So it's, but if you just need to do a transfer function or an RTA measurement at not crazy high levels, this is definitely going to work. This microphone is almost the exact same thing as the DBX measurement microphone, but this is Rational Acoustics version. We'll say it is pin three hot. So the, the polarity is gonna be opposite of other, other microphones that are pin two hot. Not a big deal. You have a polarity switch on every interface ever. And it's a great option if you need to have something that just lives in your backpack maybe as a spare or that you carry around with you at all times, or you might have your other nicer microphones in your Pelican. That's how I do it. Um, I'm able to use that. Again, 99 bucks, get it from Rational Acoustics. Um, and if you don't live in the US or not able to get this one shipped to you, some other options that are great is the Dayton Audio. I think it's the EMM6. Honestly, anything is going to work. It's a matter of just build quality and longevity of the microphone. So that's why if you're going to shell out for something, I went and spend more than the $330, $330 on the EMX7150. I think you're getting into the land of diminishing returns right there. But if you need something that, yeah, you can take it on a gig with you where you're going to be outside and maybe the elements are kind of harsh and don't want to take your nice stuff, take take a few of these Rational Acoustics RTA 420s. Again, the frequency response between even this and this microphone is going to be really, really similar. It's just the build quality, the the sensitivity being similar between, the frequency response being similar between. Um, it's it's You're going to come out on top either way, but if you're going to be he measuring high SPL, definitely go with the 7150. Next up is cabling. Pretty simple here. The two cables you need is first your loopback cable. If you're gonna use that, I have a TRS to TRS because my monitor outputs on my Evo 8 are TRS. And then I have these combo jacks, which are TRS and they just loop back in. So it's output one, loops back in to input number four. And that's if I'm using the physical loopback, most of the time I'm using the digital loopback because I want all four of my microphones. And then you're also going to need to be able to get your signal generator out to your system under test. So that would be one of these cables. That is a quarter inch TRS to XLR male cable. And that would go XLR into your system processor or your console or whatever you're measuring. And that would again, just run out the other output and go right into your device. So these are probably 10, 15 bucks each. You can order them from Sweetwater or wherever. Uh, anything that's copper is going to work. Next, we have our SPL calibrator. So if you really want to accurately log SPL, you're going to need to calibrate your inputs. And what that means is we're going to take our measurement microphone, hook it up to our interface, gain it up a little bit, and they're actually going to take this little device and put it on top of the microphone, and it creates a little chamber in there. And here on this side, we have some buttons I can turn it on, and it plays a sine tone at a predetermined value, either at 94 dB or at 110 dB. And then that serves as now our reference level in our software. So now when the voltage reads that amount digitally in our software, it knows that it's 94 dB or 110. Either one is going to work. And so that's what this unit is for. So it is the Isomcon SC1. See that right here. You can get it from Rational. They're currently sold out for, for, for high demand of stuff. And that's where I buy it from. Anything like, wow, that's, that's pretty pricey for this type of unit. 
this is something that I wouldn't spend less money on. It's either going to break or not be as accurate. This is the industry standard. I'm not the type of person who's going to say like, oh yeah, you need to buy top notch everything. I just told you to get a $200 interface. So like, why is my calibrator cost more than my interface? Like, well, you get enough value out of the interface to do exactly what you need to do for $200. We don't need to pay more. So there is enough value in shelling out $373 for this guy for it to be accurate and durable for the long haul. It's really well built. <laughs> it's, it's this steel can. Um, comes with a nice case with it as well. So definitely worth investing there. Our last piece of hardware we're going to run into is a Disto. So this isn't a gotta have, or it's also called a laser tape. But this, you tap a button and you're able to point your laser somewhere and measure distances. So this isn't specifically for sound system tuning, but if you need to draw a quick model of a room and they haven't given you a CAD drawing, it's good to verify on site. Anyway, this will help you measure that quickly. This is the Leica X4. It has a camera on it so I can see outside what I'm looking at. It measures up to 150 meters, so 450-ish feet, and it does that. I've been in a room that's mega long, and it, it gets there. It's crazy. Uh, the one that I had before would not keep up, and this can definitely do it. It also has an inclinometer on it, so I can put it on a surface, and it'll tell me uh, the degree of down tilt or up tilt it has relative to flat. Um, it's calibrated very well. If I put it on a flat surface, it tells me zero, and I've used it before to maybe check the fly bar inclination on a rig. Uh, I've used it when building a design file to put it on a walkway that was slanted down and it told me the angle. I can put that in my ease file. Really useful tool. You can get that at their website. Uh, order from them or one of their distributors. Again, it's pricey. It's $4.95. <laughs> Again, it's crazy that these ancillary tools cost you know, more than double in this case of our audio interface, which is kind of the heart of our rig. Again, this amount of value, I would not pay less than this for something that I need in the field and I need it to work. You can pay less, but it's not going to go the same distance as this. It's not going to be as durable. Um, and also their support is really well done uh, at Leica. You can read out, reach out to them. So anyway, uh, those it's a great ancillary tool. Not a gotta have, but definitely one to, to have if you're doing this type of work regularly. Next, it's gonna be our measurement and analyzer software. Here, I've got Smart. Uh, it's definitely pervasive and used worldwide. It is a world-class software. I'm actually in the middle of their Smart Operator Fundamentals online course. I've learned a ton. The folks at Rational Acoustics have been super helpful to me in learning it, answering my questions, making it intuitive, and I've really been super happy with it. So this is the software that's going to be able to put the data in front of you in a meaningful manner from your rig so that you can make actionable decisions. There's other software out there. I just haven't used a lot of them, and the ones I have, I haven't found better than this, so I think Smart is worth the investment. I have Smart Suite, which is their top package, but I want to walk you through some other ways you can get Smart, still get a ton of great results out of it at a different price point. So they have different editions now with Smart V9. And what's cool is if you upgrade to V9, you still got V8, and that could still be installed on two machines, and then V9 on two machines. It may be way back at V5, I'm not sure, but you can still keep that if you're really familiar and comfortable with a specific one. But with V9, they've up to, uh, updated their pricing model and kind of split up the software a little bit differently. So the first one, if I need to be able to create real-time real spectrum and transfer function measurements, monitor and log SPL data, and, and be able to make acoustical measurements to calculate specific intelligibility criteria in your RT60, you need Smart Suite. So basically the big mamma jamma is Smart Suite. And we'll get the pricing here in just a minute. So if you need the complete feature set of Smart's real-time mode, so basically don't get impulse response mode with limited SPL functionality, and you don't need impulse response mode, then, hey, cool, let's get Smart RT. So if you're used to VA, like what happened to Smart DI, Smart DI is done. It still lives, but they're not supporting it anymore. Uh, I guess they'll, they will give you support on it if you have that software. They're not actively developing it. I'll put it that way. And then, so do I need spectrum and transfer function measurements with no frills or advanced features? Because I mostly use the default settings anyway. So you just want to pull it up, go, you're using it 20 minutes twice a week, then maybe Smart LE should be a good fit. Then lastly, if you are an acoustician, which you may be watching this if you're an acoustician, but probably not my, my, my target audience, you definitely need Smart Suite. 
and you need, and they also have smart SPL as a standalone if you're just wanting to do SPL. But you're probably wanting to do transfer functions and RTA and the whole bit. So you're gonna need one of these three, smart suite, smart RT, or smart LE. So let's look at the pricing structure. They've also got now a perpetual license and a one year subscription license. And then of course their normal upgrade. So you can look at each of these, hey, do I need the full Mamma Jamma smart suite? So that's $12.99. And then smart LE, so the no frills, I need to be able to do some spectrum and transfer functions, don't care about impulse responses. Um, you can upgrade from 299, do a one year subscription for 159, or do a perpetual license for 499. Then we have smart RT, which you ha now have some SPL functionality. Uh, you can upgrade, you can do a yearly subscription for 279, and you also have some under the hood stuff that you can now touch. And then Smart RT Perpetual is $899. Or if you only need SPL, that is $349. So those are three different ways you can slice up your needs for Smart. And uh, a little bit later on, we're going to be jumping into, okay, if I'm at this point in my audio journey, what gear should I get? What software should I get? And we'll talk about that. Um, but that's how you can get Smart. Again, it's an amazing piece of software, Rational Acoustics, both from a support standpoint and an education standpoint has been fantastic. I really like them. Now let's talk through three different setups of the gear we, we've been talking about. So if I'm a budget conscious beginner, am I a freelancer who's got a Pelican and I just want to be able to bring a rig with me? Or maybe I work at a production company and want to get something in a rack a little bit more formalized. So here are the three setups I would recommend with this gear. So first is the budget conscious beginner, and I would do this. I would get an RTA 420 or a similar microphone, the $99 range. I would get an Evo, uh, Evo 4, so just two mic inputs. It's got two outputs. You can hook up two microphones to it if you want. If you want to get a second and have two measurements, or you can have the physical loop back and one microphone. On the bottom left here, we've got our loop back cable and our cable that gets us out to the system under test, and then a one-year subscription of Smart LE. Again, you can have as many inputs as you want with Smart LE. That's a big difference how they departed from Smart DI, Rational Acoustics did. Have as many inputs as you want, ran transfer, transfer functions, run RTA measurements, and that's all for $3.98 for that one-year subscription, the audio interface, one microphone, and I'm budgeting 10 or 20 bucks or so for the cabling. So if you're budget-minded beginner, this one is for you. Next one I'm calling the Pelican Pro. So if you're a freelancer, maybe you want to have a few more microphones, a different measurement, this is what I would do. Again, you can always stair step into this. You don't have to shell out all this cash today. But I would get four iSimCon EMX 7150s. So these are the pro measurement microphones that can all do SPL. They're all going to hold up super well over time. They're built very, very well. Those are 330 each. Then we have the RTA 420. I would still keep, have one of these and I'll keep it in your backpack. Because sometimes uh, I do a couple local corporate gigs where I don't bring my Pelican. I just got one microphone if I need it. And it could just be your one if you're on a super dusty or rainy outdoor gig. You just bring that one. You can leave your nice mics at home. Again, here's our cabling down here in the bottom left. And I'll get the Evo 8. This is what I got here. It's the 8 input, or sorry, 4 input audio interface, the Evo 8. I've had mine, I've used it on dozens of gigs now, it's been awesome. And I would still get a one year subscription of Smart LE and all of that gear is gonna run you $17.97. So I like, uh, I've I bought the perpetual license for Suite. That's just what I wanted to do. I knew I was gonna use it for the long haul, but maybe if you're just stair stepping into this, paying for full price just feels uh, like maybe you just can't do that right now. So have it for a full year, use the crap out of it, get really comfortable and like, yeah, I wanna to commit to this, then go ahead and buy it. You don't have to stay on the subscription plan. Now I'm calling this the Fly Rack Pro. So you want something that is rack manable and has a lot of inputs. It's very similar to our previous setup. It would still be four iSimCon EMX 7150s. I would have one RTA 420, again, on those rainy gigs that you don't wanna get your other ones out or just dusty, whatever our cabling at the bottom left. and the upper right, you see the difference is we're now using the Evo 16. That can be rack mounted. They, they look great. You just have to get these little separate rack ears for them. And you have eight mic microphone inputs. So if you wanted to get real crazy and have eight mics running around, go for it. And you can make that happen. And I would still get a one year subscription of Smart LE. Then it'd be off to the races. You can always upgrade if you already got V8 or cross grade or whatever you need to do. But I think Smart, starting there 
with that one year subscription, get really comfortable with the software and then choose your path onward and how you wanna handle it after that would be a good place to go. All right, so that's the gear I would get. This is January, 2023. Things might change as other stuff comes out, but we'll say I've got four EMX 7150s. I've got an Evo 8, the cabling. I've got this SPL, the SC1. I've got the Leica X4. This is gear that I've purchased. There's no affiliates, no nothing. This is gear that I believe in, unused on shows. And I wouldn't ask you to spend your hard earned money if I didn't believe in it as well. Okay, my name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about the gear or how you use it. And I will catch you next time.